Appreciate it. I am uh, Nick McClung. I'm the recruiter from uh, Mississippi Delta. Uh, since I think November 28th, this is my third year here. So uh, just getting ready to give all information that I can. Perfect. Sounds good. So um, what we want to start with is the admissions process. So when are admissions applications open? So when do they open? And then how can students apply? So is it online, on paper, both? Just a little bit about the admissions process. Uh, so for admissions, typically we open it up around that uh, first, I guess that first month of that uh, upcoming semester. So if students are getting ready to come in the fall, it'll be uh, August 1st, um, or actually September 1st, up until that, next, that upcoming uh, semester, also uh, January as well. Uh, so they have about a whole year basically basically to apply um and it's right now it's uh online i think when i first get, got here we were doing paper but now it's uh fully online to you know to streamline the process yeah and we're seeing that with most colleges um especially junior colleges and community colleges still a lot of them still have the paper applications or are in the process of moving to that that fully online so that's good to know um so fully online awesome and then what items need to be submitted for an application okay so for our application process what we typically need and what we run the issue we run into i, I meet with a lot of seniors and they ask uh well i was i think i was accepted but it said i got an email so basically all you have to do is apply and uh we want your final transcript um so if you don't have your final transcript that's fine you'll be provisionally accepted but until may or june when you graduate that's when you'll be fully accepted so application uh, final transcript and usually the act scores are on that final transcript if not we would we appreciate to, uh, students to send it to us as well yeah and so with universities a lot of times they'll ask for a partial transcript but for you guys that's not as important right you just mostly need that final transcript yes the only time we take advantage of the in-progress transcripts are when uh, we're getting ready for uh, summer school so let's say they they're finished up this december uh and they want to apply for a summer school we'll use that in progress for that and we will actually fully accept them Gotcha. And as far as like a deadline or if you could say, like, when would you suggest that students begin applying? Like, do you have any specifics there? Like, I know that you'll have a scholarship deadline, of course, and we'll talk about that. But is there any other hard deadline that students need to really look out for? Uh, for admission sake, uh, application sake, there's not really a deadline. Um, more than likely, it would be that second week after we fully start in school because uh, after late registration then there is that cutoff period because of class sake uh, so i would just say around august not a not a specific date but maybe that second week of august or that second week after school has started for uh students to actually get those applications in but it's pretty much free for all and open until the end I personally don't know how people do that, how they just wake up and decide to go after class has started. That would stress me out. So personally, I would say before classes start, but I know people still do it. So um, while we're on the subject of deadlines, when is do you guys accept ACT scores all year round? Do you have a final like December ACT or anything like that that you accept for scholarship purposes? Uh, I, I checked on that to be sure before we started it, and we actually don't. Uh, even if a student gives us their uh, ACT score in the midst of the semester, we could still apply that uh, scholarship at the end of the, that uh, semester. So uh, wow, that's cool. really no true deadline for uh, ACT scores. Yeah, that's really cool. So if a student is a freshman in their current semester, they could still send in the ACT score. That's pretty neat. They can, they can. Cool. Um, and so with that, right now, like with ACT scores, I know super scoring is the hot topic, like everyone's talking about their super scores. So does Mississippi Delta super score? 
Uh, yes, we do. I'm, and I'm glad we do, because at first I was unsure, but we are doing, I think we uh, began doing it last semester. So if a student is was struggling to get over that bump, but then that uh, super score worked out, as long as you can get us those scores, uh, we definitely, definitely uh, honor those. Uh, super and, scores. and for clarification, since I didn't say it specifically, that's for scholarship purposes, right? So super scoring for scholarship purposes. It is, it is. And so with um, thinking about ACT scores and scholarships, what's the minimum scholarship? Um, like what's the minimum ACT requirement for scholarships? Do you have that breakdown? Yeah, so we have uh, two primary academic scholarships. Uh, the first one is the Dean Scholarship. And that is uh, if a student makes an 18 to a 24 on the ACT, that covers a full tuition. Uh, if they make a 25 or above, that covered that covers a uh, full tuition as well as room and board, so a true full ride. Um, so um, th those are our the scores that we do have. But like I said, they can apply anytime. And all they have to do um, to get these scholarships is to, to apply to the school and fill out a FAFSA application. And once they once we have those two things, we automatically award those students. And that was my next question. So there's no separate scholarship application. Just get admitted. Make sure you fill out the FAFSA. Is there a priority deadline for the FAFSA when it comes to your scholarships? Priority? Um, not really, but let me let me check the date to be sure. Sure. Uh, let's, yeah. Okay, so well, basically the first week of every semester. So for mm -hmm. August, uh, beginning to fall, it'll be August first. We we would like for it to be in. If not, we can be lenient. Uh, same thing for spring. That'll be January first, and then summer school uh, by May first at least uh, will help us out. Cool, that's awesome. And so, not it doesn't sound like there's a lot of really hard and fast deadlines which I think is great because that eliminates a lot of barriers for students. But, um, you know, sometimes schools, you know, set those deadlines and they come kind of early and students aren't even ready to start applying. So that, that's good to hear. Um, also with, with some schools, they have, you know, of course their ACT scholarships. They also might have like foundation scholarships or maybe some more unique scholarship opportunities. Does Mississippi Delta have any other scholarships other than just those automatic ACT scholarships? Uh, yes, we do. So we uh, we do have the uh, foundation scholarships. Um, we have about 65 different ones. Uh, they range from being, they can be from a certain county. Uh, they can be a grandparent of a graduate, of, uh, well, sorry, grandchild of a mm -hmm. graduate, uh, their mother, dad could have gone here. They can be a male going into a specific program. So it's, it's a lot of different scholarships. These are ones that they actually do have to apply for. Uh, the application starts opening this uh, February. So in the spring, it'll open for uh, graduating seniors. And the deadline is usually July 15th, but last year we opened it up until I think August 11th. So I would say that second week, week of August, from February to that second week of August. Perfect, which was you know, my next question, that separate scholarship application, did it have any, you know, any deadlines? So I know, Nick, you mentioned the FAFSA is a requirement um, for scholarships. Now, is that also, so is the FAFSA required just for all admitted students, or is it mainly just the students who are eligible for the scholarships? So to get scholarships, you have to fill out your FAFSA? But yeah, to get scholarships, you do have to fill out a uh, FAFSA. Um, and also, we would, we would just recommend it. We would recommend it. Absolutely. Uh, it's not necessary, but to make sure there is any money that you're not leaving on the table, scholarship, uh, Mississippi aid, anything, we definitely recommend and ask students to fill out a FAFSA. As do we, as the FAFSA is one of Get to College's primary um, goals and you know, we love helping students plan and pay and, and fill out that financial aid paperwork. So uh, as a shameless plug, please come see Get to College and let us help help you fill that stuff out. But, um, you know, let's move on a little bit to the housing um, aspect. So I don't know how familiar you are with the housing 
um, process. But, you know, when does the housing application typically open? And then again, you know, the deadline question, we're all about finding out those deadlines and barriers for students. So when does it open? When does it close? Those types of things. Okay, so again, for uh, graduating seniors, or upcoming seniors, it'll be um, basically February 1st. Uh, and up until we start school in about the third week of August, they can apply for housing. But it's based on when you put in the application. So I tell students to try to do it by March at least, because you don't want to wait. And, and we usually, every year, we do have a waiting list. And then we have to honor performance groups, uh, sports teams. And so they are designated a room for sure. And if you're just coming as an academic student, I recommend February, March. You can actually even uh, apply right now. But I would, to be sure, I would say uh, February, March, by April, uh, definitely have it in. Yeah. Do you know, and this is just a, do you know if like your waiting list is usually pretty, pretty substantial? Like you want to go ahead and get it done because you have a lot of students waiting? It usually is, and sometimes we can knock it down uh, pretty mm -hmm. well, but there are situations where I've, I've had students that would apply maybe around May or June and July that's, that's really pushing it and they weren't able to get a room. So. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's something that varies from year to year. So you may get lucky and then you may not. So it doesn't hurt to go ahead and get it done early. Mm -hmm. So um, that's good. Good. So as far as academic path. So, you know, being a junior college, I'm assuming you guys offer, you know, technical programs, certificate programs, as well as the associate path, right? Um, so just a little bit more on, you know, what those paths are, or maybe some unique programs or some of y'all's favorite programs that you might offer academically there at Mississippi Delta. Okay, so, and we pretty much offer everything when I, 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 I use three different routes, so that's what I tell students. So, as you said, we have a career tech side where you have building, automotive mechanic, HVAC, uh, field crops technology. So, these are hands-on uh, programs where you're ready to get in the workforce within a year or two years. Uh, then we also have um, health sciences, which are very popular for us, uh, nursing, medical lab tech, dental hygiene, x-ray, phlebotomy, and uh, physical therapy assistant. So that's another route the students can go. And then I always recommend the, uh, you know, associates route because that route can take you to the uh, four-year level. So from social work to business, music, math, any program that you're thinking about transferring to, to that university, we pretty much can set you up to get there. I was listening in on some of those career tech paths, and I mean, there's some great programs there. I know we hear a lot of students interested in welding, HVAC, but dental hygiene, dental hygiene is a huge one. And so I know you guys have that. I think Northeast Community College has that, but it's very competitive. Like it's a very competitive field. And so, um, but we, I, I hear that a good bit. A lot of students are interested in that. And of course, nursing. I mean, that's a big one too. So definitely, definitely. As far as um, any campus activities, student organizations, anything that you'd like to plug there? Uh, so we have the uh, SGA, the Student Government Association. I also have an art club. Uh, we have a Christian Baptist Center on campus. And then we have student activities. So, uh, and also our counseling services uh, host events. So it's a lot of different organizations or departments on campus that actually will host events for students, but I also, mm -hmm. I, I usually would recommend SGA to get students involved, give them some experience, and then they may be able to get other scholarships from universities because they're in that student government organization. Yeah, and I heard you, you mentioned like counseling services. Um, as far as other resources, what are some, you know, resources on campus that students can use, whether that be, you know, health services, counseling, anything along those lines? So counseling will, counseling usually helps uh, houses, it's gonna be disability services as gotcha. well as mental health services. So we provide resources with that, with our main counselor. Uh, as far as like tutoring or mentoring, we have a student success uh, department. So in two student success labs, one in our library 
which gives a uh, math tutoring, a uh, mentoring, book loan, and advising. And then we also have one in our one of our general buildings for freshmen. Uh, and that one focus it's a writing center, so it focuses on English and helps students with writing papers. So perfect. And so to finish us up, anything new, exciting that you guys have coming up that you'd like to let counselors know about? Um, the floor is yours. Just anything that you want to add to this that we haven't discussed so far. All right. So, uh, and I, I'll bring up a uh, physical therapy assistant again. Uh, that's the program we haven't had uh, for a very long time. So we're getting more interest with that one. Um, soon, not yet, but soon we will have a um, cosmetology program in at our Greenville Center. So we have several locations that students didn't know. We have our main campus at Moorhead, Mississippi. We have our Greenville uh, Satellite Campus, Greenwood Center, and Indianola Cap Center in Albany, Mississippi. So um, they in I'm thinking in the fall we will have that cosmetology program and we will also be bringing culinary arts to Greenville Higher Education Center as well. So though in in this this program, the culinary arts was one that was only housed at the Greenwood Center. And then for cosmetology, this was one that when students, when students would ask me, we would just miss out on that opportunity because we didn't have it. And that's something that we're uh, facilitating about to put in the work. So I'm excited about that. Uh, other than that, um, again, I'm, I'm glad that we are doing the super scores and I can't think of any anything uh, specifically new besides we are building a bookstore. So I, I do encourage students to come and, and take a campus tour. I usually host most of the campus tours. So if they want to get a feel of what campus is like, see what their classrooms will look like, and to get like a more in-depth experience, uh, I always welcome that. Perfect. Sounds good. Well, Nick, thank you for being here today. Thank you for agreeing to do this with us and um, for updating us on everything going on at Mississippi Delta Community College. We'll uh, talk to you the next time, all right? Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.